in First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18 and 19, Paul was writing to his son, Timothy. He said, Timothy, my son. I'm reading from New King James. He said, this charge I commit. This charge I commit to you, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies, previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith, a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. You see, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you. Jesus, in his first temptation, and it was about his identity, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to be bread. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone. He didn't say man shall not live by bread. He said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Do you know that we are not living by bread alone? And not hanging on every word that God has spoken concerning your life. And it's all too normal. As I was coming here, I felt again. I was teaching in a men's meeting. And that was the first meeting that is an old church they have done in their life. I was the speaker. When I finished speaking, a man stood up and said, let's face reality. And I laughed. Because every time somebody says, let's face reality, he wants you to face life the way he's seeing it. And I asked him, which reality, your own or my own? Because when two of us are talking, we are coming from two different perspectives. We are not called to be realistic. We are called to be supernatural. When God saw chaos at the beginning, he would have panicked. For he created and everything went haywire. And the spirit of God hovered and God spoke. The same way God speaks is the way, same way I should speak. And I'm not going to speak based on what I hear in the news. Or I just feel good about myself. I'm motivated. One of our speakers, our brother, did, he was talking in, in Men of Honor. He said, we used to lead into motivation. If you don't have anything, you can't be motivated. If you have zero thing, they will motivate you, you will come zero. I am motivated when I hear again what God has said concerning my life. Today I want to talk about living and winning by prophecy. Many years ago, I had to go for prophetic conferences. Why? Because it has always been abused. You can never seek a fake three naira note. Anything that is faked means there's an original. If you have a fake doctor, that means there's an original doctor. If you, has a, if you have a fake pastor, that means there's an original pastor. If you have fake prophet, that means there's, a, there's original prophet. The only thing is that many of us are not studying it. I will support even and more us that we should go, we should desire spiritual gift. And among the spiritual gift, he said we should desire more. Is the gift of prophecy. How many of you this week have prayed, Lord, increase my gift of prophecy? Let there be an increase of the measure. Let there be an upgrade. The Bible says you should lust after it. I thought the Bible is not you should not lust. Well, it says you should lust after spiritual gift. Lust after spiritual gift. And most times we run away from it. And the person that runs towards it and perverts it, you are angry. It is your gift. Can I say something to you? You don't work for gift. Anything you work for is no longer a gift. All you need to do is to receive it. I had to go to study and I discovered there's a whole new, a whole world of prophetic realm that we have not operated in. And we are so used to principles. 
If I start teaching principles of business, now many of you will be so excited. Then you put the principles to work. Then one plus one is not equal to two. Neither my same principles are not good. You must combine the person and the principle of Jesus. The person and the principles of Jesus. Many people want skills. Skills can be learned. You will hear it say Coca-Cola liquid content only. Those days. You don't bottle air. You look for content before you do bottle. And so we must get to that level where we must understand that. How do I live and win by prophecy? What God has said concerning your life, have you written it down? Do you write it on your walls? Do you read it to yourself? Do you record it? And let me tell you, one of the tools of the enemy that he uses against you is discouragement. Discouragement. The last test of David before he became king was that the men he trained decided to stone him. Very innovative men. He was rejected at every level in his life. To the extent that the men he raised to be mighty men decided to stone him. And the only thing he did, the Bible says, and God and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Hear me. There are some times I won't encourage you. He told the priest, bring me the Urim and the Turim, signifying the presence of God. When, word, when the word has rejected you, then you need to face him and go after him. That's the only way you encourage yourself in the Lord. And how do you look, face him? You face him by first of all, you see, there are some situations you are in, you can never remember what God has done in the past. You can't even see what God is doing. You can't think of what he's doing. You, let, let's put it this way. You can't even see what God is doing. You can't even hear what God is doing. The only thing you start doing is taking stock of your life. Look at where you have brought me from. Look at, look at how you have dealt with me. The moment you start doing that, all of a sudden your heart begins to... And somebody will say, how many hours will I do it? I don't know. Because every testimony God gives to you is a prophecy. You see, most times when miracles happen to you, it's not for you to feel good alone. It's for you to use it to retrain your brain. So when I saw the miracles of God feeding people in the desert, not a family, it's easier to feed the family, Abby. I'm talking about a nation. People who had no land. They were sojourning. They had a leader. They had a people. They had a law that governs them, but no land for the execution. And yet, God was feeding them. He was caring for them. Giving them heat at night and air condition at day. For a nation, not a family, not an individual. And the question we should be asking, what's your prophetic word? What's your prophetic word? Apostle Paul said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, he said we should desire spiritual gift. You can read it. Prophecy is about strengthening others. It's about encouraging others. It's about comforting others. Every prophetic word that you hear that makes you to panic and be afraid, it's not from God. It can be from the first heaven, it can be from the second heaven, but it's not from the third heaven. You say, I see clearly you are going to have an accident. Yes, you saw clearly, but where? From which window? A person that is on top of this roof and you are that is down, two of you have two different perspectives. I'm seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. When somebody tells you they have programmed for you to die, say, I know. For I know the thoughts I have towards you. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Tell the person, steal news. 
And if you have a prophetic word over somebody that is going to die, please don't release it. Go back to God and say, what is the solution? God cannot be stranded because of the wicked one. No matter the shot the devil gives you. Huh? That's all he has got. He, he can't do anything. God has the final shot. Every prophetic word reveals what is in your book. Everybody here came to act out a script. You should have that thing that is in Azon Shwashiniga that tells you I will be back. You should have that thing that we always say in our local palace, art or not, they die for fame. No matter how you say, hee, 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 hee. Even if the truck falls on him, they'll find, they find a way on how he entered the hole. You are an actor acting out a script. So when people give you your prophetic word, it says what is in your book. And that's how you wage warfare. Today I will lead you to do something, but I will ask you to examine your heart. If you, don't, if you don't have it, you go and stay in one corner. Let me tell you. Let me put it this way. First of all, first of all, some of you don't even like yourself. It starts from there. Some of you don't like the family you came from. Hmm. Even the, the community you came from, you don't like it. As I'm talking to you now, Bini City, you are staying, you don't like it. Is it a bad thing? No. If you sleep a, with a woman you don't like, it's two things. Halotry or rape. How many of you are raping Benin? You came for message this afternoon, eh? If you really know, because it starts with yourself, that you love yourself, raise up your hand. You like the way your hair is, you like the way your eyes is, you like the way your shape is. Don't put your hand down. Don't. If you like your family that you came from, boy, extended and your bloodline. <laughs> you know, they have told us many things that are dangerous and is working against you that I will separate myself from my family. Meanwhile, God saved you to save them. I'm not saying you should go there. I'm saying you should love them enough to be a watchman there. If you know you love this city, raise up your hand. No, 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 no. When I say it, you know, when I say that one, don't raise up your hand quickly. Because that's where we are going to. If you don't like it, it's don't, 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 don't pretend. Don't pretend you like it. Because if you like it, if, okay, let me try to say it now. I love my wife. Huh? somebody now tells me to leave her in Benin and move. Then I now, no, I didn't say Jack, maybe to Lagos that we should be staying apart or I will leave her to be in maybe I will move. I'll be staying in Testament Road. We will now separate 
and I agree and say, you know, I love you. Will you agree with me? Based on that theology and that example, if you love this city, raise up your hand. Because I will take you somewhere. So I don't want you to complete, commit rape. Now, don't feel shame if you didn't raise up your hand. Because God is taking you to go and love something else. I met a man who is not from a city, but loved that city so much. That it was released to them. To him. There are many of you. Originally, I'm not from this city. From this city. Maybe partly. Because the lineage my, mother, my grandfather's mother came from, very troublesome. But that apart. Hebrews chapter 10, because I just had to put that thing, because I will need you to pray this today. Because some of you, this land, we need to start producing for you. Amen. Oh, you didn't get it clear. Amen. I said this land, we start producing. It has been producing before, but you have not, you have loved the land, but you have not made love to the land. And as long as you have not made love to the land, you can never, without intimacy, there's no fruitfulness. Why do we call upon God intimacy? It's in that place of intimacy, there's an exchange. He takes my limited ideas and gives me some limited ideas. In Hebrews chapter 10, I'm talking about your book, verse 7. Then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of book. It is written of me. To do your will, O oh God. How do you win and how do you live and win by prophecy? Is that you must value prophetic word. The first thing, value it. The Bible says, and Mary treasured every word in her heart. She treasured it. She treasured it. You don't keep a treasure anyhow. Our sister Becky that lost her gold, she, she doesn't keep it anyhow. The moment she kept it anyhow, that's why it was missing. I'm sure she won't really forget it in the car again. You keep a treasure in a safe. You keep it in your heart that nobody can steal it. The birds cannot come. The Bible talks about the sower that went to sow. There's one that fell on the path. The one that fell by, the, by, by, by tons, among tons. Some birds come, they once fell on rocky ground. There's the one that fell on good soil. The question is that where, where's, where do you keep the treasure? Does that seed that God plants in your heart, is it planted in a good soil? The seed is the same, but the soil is very different. You must treasure prophetic word. How do I know you treasure prophetic word? You know sometimes we pick up prophetic words there. I can assure you, some of you, as you get home, you don't even know where it is now. The one I picked this Sunday, is just, it just says, just trust me. Just trust me. We are the one that say, Jesus, yesterday, today, and forever. Do we live like, as if we believe that word? You know, sometimes I preach, some people will say he does not know what we are going through. I know. I know. But I must call you to a higher perspective. Just imagine when Jesus looked at his disciples, 5,000 men beside women and children. He said, you feed them. If you were Jesus' disciple, what would you tell Jesus? No, what will you tell Jesus, Peter? Pastor Peter, what will you tell Jesus? He's not a wicked man. They, have to, they had to tell him, even a, a year's wages will not 
He said, what do you have? To discourage him further, they say five loaves and two fish. Of a little boy. And I says, let them sit down. I just, I just perceived the way they were gossiping him. Just as some of you gossip me too. Not in a bad way. I'm telling you, 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 I hear the secret conversations of your heart in my bedroom. You, got, you, you just you say, say, no, you see what the priest said. You don't know what in Najabi. I hear the secret conversation. But when the thing begins to work, you don't even go back again, no. To make those secret conversations again. I can't answer you based on your woundedness. The same Red Sea that was facing the people was still facing Moses. Was he in the other side? He said, Moses, I speak with him face to face. May you speak with God face to face. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Value it. In Luke chapter 2, verse 49 to 51, and Jesus said to them, why will you need to search for me? Did you know what is necessary? That it was necessary for me to be here in my father's house. Consume with him. Mary and Joseph didn't fully understand what Jesus meant. Jesus went back home with them to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasures Jesus' word deeply in her heart. Deeply in her heart. Don't only treasure it in your heart. Draw strength from it. I can assure you, huh? most of you are drawing strength from everything from social media. You see, as we are projecting a rise, by end of next month, it will be 150. How many of you have heard that one? Huh? I'm not saying their projection is wrong, go. Because some of you will be saying, you don't know. I'm not saying their projection is wrong. Did I say so? When they make pencil, there's eraser. For every problem, there's a solution. I'm not saying. There was one time you rent a, a whole flat, 4K. But it's in this nation I've never seen the only person that is homeless are mad people that are violent because there are some cool mad people they are in their <laughs> Draw strength from it. Don't draw strength from it what you hear in the news. What is here in the news is after the facts. You can't be current by listening to news. You are still. Before last year hit, we began to talk about abundance and overflowing lack. You know, I was surrounded recently when I traveled. I surrounded with, when I heard news from Nigeria, I come tap myself. Ah, but another country at the call for. <laughs> if you are not careful, and that's why some of you be careful what you post and repost. And do things. Some of you don't even check. They say they are killing people in, 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 in along Bini City, along Bini Lagos Highway. Meanwhile, the picture is that all the grasses are very dry. Or the grasses are so green. Meanwhile, you are in dry season. You didn't take out your time. No. This, which day rain for that everywhere is green? You send to your brother abroad. Then you, you both use that gist for one hour. You are drawing strength from it. 
you are drawing strength. <laughs> One day I told my friend, I said, I'm going to Lagos by road. He said, no, try him. <laughs> when you stood before a prophetic team and they gave you that don't worry, the husband is coming. Why don't you draw strength from that? You know why you don't draw strength from that? You draw strength from the delay. The delay. Sometimes they give you prophetic word. As you pass through that door, it happens immediately. There are others. 25 years. All this one you say, Ozibo, Ozibo, wait and take. Settle me early. If you don't settle me early, when will I enjoy the breakthrough? Listen. You are drawing strength, not from your word. Who told you you will die? Who told you that 60s is late? Recently, somebody celebrated 80 years birthday. I thought the man was lying. Still walking agile. My wife knows him. Dressing very fine. When you see the wife, you'll be wondering whether they are 60. Now, now, I don't even know whether you are up to 60 now because the way your face is, you have a problem. <laughs> the way you are going, you might not get to where you stay. Even if they settle you early, you will not enjoy it because I'm telling you, even if they settle you now, Why? Some of the breakthrough you are looking for, you need character to handle it. Can you take care of your husband? The way you are packaged now. Can you take care of your wife? I'm not saying you won't get married. The way you like to fight for your rights. It's not a marriage like that, though. <laughs> In Acts 27, verse 21 to 25, Apostle Paul stood up. I like to paraphrase it in verse 25. He says, so keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he has told me. He told them, he said, go and eat. For the angel of whose I am stood by me and told me, no loss of life. And when he said it, the storm was still raging. I know the storm is still raging around you. But the word has gone for draw strength from it. Don't. You see, when we get to meet, when we go and we and we take out our prophetic word from where we put it and begin to read it, let it be give us strength. You know what I see sometimes? Say, boy, they don't tell me tired. <laughs> okay, what would they tell you again? When you open Bible, Sarah must still get to 90. Abraham must still be 100 years. Lazarus said, you should, you should, uh, the rich man said, tell, tell Lazarus to go by. We still wanted to send him a message in, the, in, in, in heaven. To go and tell my people. And Abraham said, they don't need anybody to come out from here. If you can't hear your son that wakes up at night and just wakes up, the eyes still close and say, Mommy, don't worry, and goes back to sleep. If that one cannot talk to you, the nothing will talk to you again. Jesus. Even Baba Lawo that you go and meet, you will, you will start upgrading. From Yoko Roma, you will move to Ijebu. I'm telling you, you will move everywhere. Until, you are, you, because. You are looking for a higher belief. Yeah. And God's way is very simple. Trust me. That's all. Trust me. Draw strength from it. And as you begin to draw strength, you know what you do? From that thing, begin to speak it. From the head and not the tail. He said he would take care of me. 
I'm God's baby. He will, he will provide. That, that, and somebody will be telling you. Now, so now they do. I'm sure you have listened to Reverend Ben talking. He's deceiving you, people. You are full. Sometimes you are full of faith when you get to, when you leave church. You go outside, two punches from two of your close friends that have not, that, that do not have the mind of Christ. It's gone. Two WhatsApp message, aka broadcast. From your secondary school mates. That they don't know who you, where you are. Mute them. You can't use your hand and buy phone and buy trouble. Whatsoever things that are true. Whatsoever things that are lovely. Whatsoever things that are of good report. Think on these things. Those are the things he wants you to take on. Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatsoever things that are true. Whatsoever things that are pure. Some people will always accuse you. Why are you very optimistic? Okay. Should I be negative? You know when you are negative, you are realistic. When you are optimistic, you are not in this world. And really, you really want to be of this world. And Jesus told you, the Bible tells you, you are in this world, but you are not of this world. What will mean that you walk around a land that has no, you have no money, but you have the land, and you walk around it and say it shall be built? For your word said, you told me, I will not lack roof over my head. Then somebody seeing you marching, say, what are you doing? Say, I'm declaring my prophetic word. You know what they will tell you? Now by talk. I'm building my... <laughs> when God saw chaos, he brought money. There's a time for the speaking and there's the time for the forming. He spoke and recreated it. Planted it supernaturally there. In Genesis chapter 2, he formed you can't speak what you have not, you can't form what you have not created. My brothers and sisters, we need to keep up this prophetic movement. When people meet you, they should, sh they should see hope. When people see you, they should be encouraged. When people see you, they should be comforted. You know what some people accuse me of? He said, you'll be talking as if there's no problem in this country. Can I say something to you? Is there a country there's no problem? Is if... If I, if I leave this woman, man or another woman, my life will be better. How do you have faith in a woman you don't know? The one you have stayed with for 10 years, you don't have faith in her. The one you don't know. You know, that, it baffles me that this, 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 this woman, this woman, I wish I had married this person. How do you know? You have faith in the unknown. That means you are supernatural. Although you don't know it. You have faith in a, in, you have faith in a situation you have never experienced before than having faith in a situation you have experienced. Do you love yourself? Do you love your family? If the enemy can cause you to walk in fear, he has distracted you from your destiny. You're fully distracted. I stood before some prophetic, a prophetic person. I said, give me a word. 
she reiterated everything. Some of the things that I'm seeing in our lives and even our church today is what words that have been spoken over our lives. You cannot be pregnant and, and begin to declare, I'm not, I'm not pregnant, I'm not pregnant. And you expect to be pregnant. Sometimes we say, we say the things we don't want and expect the other thing. Then when you are saying the thing you want, some people will say you are proud. How can I agree? Some of you have agreed with the adversary for too long. Today we will disagree with him. You have agreed. You will disagree with him. That you need to, so, some, some, some people believe that I need to get connected to some persons to be connected in life. And as long as you are not connected with so people, you will do everything to stay connected with them. And you find out that when you connect, that you start seeing some breakthrough. And you think it is. But the ultimate connector is God. When you follow him, he will connect you to other people. I need to ask this question. Do you love yourself? If you are married, you love your wife or your husband. Because some people are married to their wife and they don't love them. Because, not does it. And love is not by mouth. It's by action. The question I need to ask, the family you came from, because some people don't like their family at all. I know there are bad people there. Very wicked, terrible people. You know what a man told me whose father brought, whose grandfather brought a court to this land? You know what he told me? He said, that's how they knew how to fight. When your grandfather went to make a covenant with the devil, it's not because he wanted you people to die. He wanted to, he was deceived. They told him that's how he would protect his children. There is no man that wants his children to die or his generation. Why do men here look for a boy child? They were deceived. Wherever they are, they will be regretting. That I thought that I was doing prosperity for my children. I only enjoy prosperity and I look at how, how, how poor they are. If you don't see that perspective, I know there are witches in your village, but there's no village that have closed down. They say all the witches have finished people there. They closed down a the village. They now went to another village, closed it down. You know why they are still functioning? You have not become a savior to that place. Is it on your watch that people should be dying in your family? You say, as long as it not touch my, my, my household. Meanwhile, your name is mentioned. Did, did, did David not say, is anyone left in the house of Saul that I will show mercy for Jonathan's sake? Now, so your record will come out one day. <laughs> if you don't say not on my word, this will stop. It will move past this generation. How many of you love your family, both, 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 both nuclear and extended? Raise up your hand. Because this next prayer, if you pray this prayer, you'll be raping. And every rapist is life imprisonment. It's rather the word puts you in prison than you are locked supernaturally. The city you are living, do you love it? When I was listening to Pastor Macho one time, he planted a church. He left here, he was doing well. 
his church had already taken over a building of a bank. I've gone there. I don't know what happened to him. He has gotten a good lease there. Ten years lease. They were building children's church. All of a sudden, they say, it's one building that he has seen in Aguda. And so really, people don't go to Aguda to plant church. One day, somebody called me, one of our daughters. I said, my sister said, I saw your picture in a building that everybody is afraid of. And your pastor is coming to preach there. How can he go and plant it? That means he loves that place. There are other things. Do you love the city that you are in? Is up your heart. Mm, think well. Think well. If I say, do you love? It's not loving from afar. One day somebody was talking to me, said, you don't love Nigeria. I said, you don't love Nigeria more than I do. If you love, come. Come and experience the heat. Come and experience the darkness. Come and experience the bad road. And you are still smiling and you are still blessing. You are not cursing. Please, out of that reality. Because some of you have changed your family name because you listen to one message. <laughs> Can I assure you, and I say something to you, without that family, you won't be here. At all. Whether it was polygamy, because that's how they knew how to produce. Yeah. Oh, you don't understand. Why did they marry plenty of wife? Yeah. It's production. For farming. <laughs> Can I also say so to you that that's how you have summer holiday in America? It's farming. Because some of you say, I'm going on summer holiday. Why did they do three months of summer holiday? In Pennsylvania area of farming and all those things. You still have the Amish women who give birth to 12 children on Saturday. 15 children. I'm not talking about yesterday. I've lived in a house with a, a place where we went to do, my wife went to do a three weeks training. She gave birth to 10 children. Stand up. Uh, peace. It's just bigger than how by small size. <laughs> Ten children. Three of the children died in one day. A set of twin and one child. It's a twin and one child. And I was talking to her. The joy of the Lord was even more than my own. And she didn't pack out of the area. The question, do you love this city or the city you are living? Because some of you, there's a city you love now, you'll soon be there. There are some of you, there are some families you love that you want to join, you will soon be there. So this prayer we are going to be praying is the prayer of making love to your city and to your nation. And it's in scripture. Because some people have not done that. You have loved the Lagos state. You have loved Aguda. It's not time for production. Imagine you have been loving your wife for many years now. How many years have you been married? <laughs> Imagine you have been loving her, sleeping on the same bed, but not sleeping with her. And really, you love her. But there can never be fruitfulness. Eyes up on your feet, everyone.
You're